Hey guys, what's up? It's Jordan. Yeah, I'm not. Back at it again with another video. You already know. We back at it or whatever. And for today's video, I'm doing a get ready with me for work while I tell you random facts about myself. I have a lot of random shit to talk about. So I figured this would be a fun way for you to get me to English. I figured this would be a fun way for you to get me did I really just fuck it up again? I figured that this would be a fun way for you to get to know me better. Finally, geez louise. I'm not gonna really like go into the specifics of my makeup routine because I already have a video like that. So I'm just gonna kind of be doing my thing while I spew a bunch of random facts about myself. So if you're interested, keep on watching. Oh, and by the way, I'm also gonna show you my outfit and some food I might make, some coffee, whatever. We already got our coffee for work because I need energy. Um, I Work starts at 2.30. It's like, I have no idea what time it is right now, but let's just hope we're on par with the timing. So let's just get right on into this video without further ado. Whoosh! My full name is Jordan Lisa Raffel. And fun fact, my sister's middle name is my mom's twin sister's name. It's Emma Sonia Truett Raffel. And my middle name is my mom's name. I don't know why they chose to make our middle names their names, but kind of fun. I get to have my mom's name in my name. Super slay. My mom is a graphic designer and my dad is an actor slash professor. So I feel like I have a lot of loud, like, personalities in my family and like very creative people my uncle works in broadway too and that's on my dad's side of the family so it's just like a lot of creativity and my dad actually he was in the movie titanic and he played a uh, basketball with leo and toby mcguire and the magician guy and whenever he explains it he's always like yeah i was just giving the ball to leo like every time i was like he can do no wrong um and it's always like really funny and he was also in star trek and a bunch of commercials and random movies and what have you i was born in san francisco in 2004 i went to private school from kindergarten to second grade and for preschool i actually went to a jewish preschool and then for kindergarten to second grade i went to a catholic preschool and then after that i went to public school um which was like kind of weird i guess i had like i dipped my toe in all the different religions and at the private school the catholic school they okay let me go into my catholic school story because this shit is it's kind of crazy so in catholic school all the girls like when i was little i wanted to be a famous singer my whole thing was i want to be the next justin bieber but like the female version and i could not afford voice lessons like all these rich girls and we would do singing competitions like me and another girl and the other girl like had tons and tons of vocal lessons and her parents like helping her and i was just kind of like raw dogging it like doing my own thing practicing myself doing like karaoke and every single time everybody would be like oh yeah she is so much better than you like she's so much better at singing like they she would win every time and i was so hurt and then i came to school sick one day and I had a raspy voice and then I did the singing competition and I won and everyone was like, you should keep your voice like that, Jordan. It sounds so much better. They were just like mean. And literally whenever we would play games like at recess, they would always force me to be the dad or the dog when I like I'm tall. And at the time I was a bit chubbier for my age. It's like maybe I want to be the baby. Like maybe I want to be the mom. Why do I have to be the dad and the dog? And they would just like be a little bit mean, like passive aggressive mean with me. The way that I would entertain them, which I didn't even realize that this was messed up until like a few years ago. But while we were waiting for pickup to make them laugh, I would show them as many double chins as I could do. And they could be like, oh my God, do more double chins. And actually that's like kind of not, not cool, but I just like wanted, I was like so wanted to be liked. So I would do anything 
to make that happen. Also, at this private school, they were like low-key, like this isn't the students, this is like the teachers. They were low-key very crazy. So basically, I had, I didn't have any like learning issues. Like I was in kindergarten, so like you're in kindergarten. Like how do you already have learning issues? Like when that's when you're learning how to read. And they forced my parents to hire a tutor to tutor me in kindergarten. And then as time went on, they put me in special classes so that I could learn better. Like the special, the special needs kids classes for like the, not the dumb kids, but like it felt like I was the dumb kid. They would pull me out of class, like in front of everybody to put me in these special classes. And I was just like, okay, like whatever. And then it keeps going. Then during recess, I was finally like fed up with having to be the dad and the dog and like all these like rich girls BS. So I just started bouncing my ball alone at recess. I would just be alone and I was like chilling. Like I was like just having a fun time by myself. And then they made force me to see the school counselor who is this like old woman. And I was in like kindergarten, first grade. So I was like pretty young and they forced me to see her every week. And basically all we would do was play Moncala in silence. And then she would interrogate me like this. She would be like, Jordan, why are you unhappy? Why are you unhappy? Tell me why you're unhappy. And then my parents would have to go to Jordan meetings on the weekends to discuss it, which is just like, let me live. You know what I mean? They were really hating on me from the get go. Living in San Francisco was such a trip. So much random stuff happened. Like one time in the middle of the night, a drunk driver like totaled a, um, a babysitter's car and just like fully like it was so loud it was like the craziest thing in the middle of the night that's only one example one time people went through our trash to set to try to steal our identities and they were wearing mickey mouse helmets which is random um and then one time on our birthdays someone stole my dad's car and he followed them in my mom's car and I think they caught him. Another time, some like lady broke into my mom's car. She just like stole all her makeup and her sunglasses, but that's not the kick of it all. When she left, cause she didn't steal the car or anything, apparently she had had a super highly contagious butt rash or something like that. And my mom was trying to hire somebody to clean the car and nobody would do it because of the contagious butt rash that was inf it was infested with. So she finally had to pay a ton of money and people wore hazmat suits to clean the car. So that's some of the stuff that happened when I lived in San Francisco. But let's get into some more other facts. I have had a YouTube channel for I think six years and I think honestly, it's always been my dream. And this like sounds a little weird, but it's always been my dream to like do something in the public eye. I don't know really what it is because when I was really little, it was singing. I really wanted to be a singer. And as I got older, it started being YouTube and I was really into YouTube. But like now I'm like also kind of interested in acting and modeling but it's like i don't know i really have always wanted to be in the public eye as like a huge dream of mine but i've never known how to like really make it happen and i i don't know but i feel like sometimes it was like it might be meant to happen in my life because it from such a young age literally like like five years old, I was like making videos and like doing all this stuff. I would like do haul videos without even having a camera in my room. So I just feel like for some reason, like it might be in my path at some point in my life. Maybe, maybe not. But I really like doing what I do on YouTube and it's really rewarding for me. And it's really fun. Like I just have like a really fun time and YouTube has been like, very much a outlet for me like 
I don't know if that's the right word, but it's been a safe space for me because a lot of the times I've struggled with friendships and bullying a lot. So when I like feel like I can't really talk to my peers or I'm just like having a really bad time at life, I could just go submerse myself into my YouTube videos, edit them, all that good stuff and really just make it happen. It's just always going to be a place, even if nothing comes from my YouTube or anything like that. I'm always gonna be grateful for having YouTube growing up. Now let's get more into my high school years. So I have been to, let me count, one. I went to three different high schools. Let me get a little bit into that one because, so basically I'm bipolar. Um, I have bipolar type one. And that's obviously, as one can imagine, has caused a lot of issues in my life. Like mania, I, if you guys don't know about what mania is, it's like when you, you're you just like very detached from reality and you're like running on high, you don't sleep, your thoughts don't make sense, you're doing crazy shit, like all that stuff. And my first manic episode was when I was 15. And so I went to the hospital, I went to the psych ward, I've been to a lot of different psych wards throughout my, my teenage years, um, like I think four or five, and I might do a story time in to, to actually like talk about that because it's kind of interesting. I went to the psych ward and then they sent me to a rehab. And this rehab wasn't like rehab for mental health, like to figure out your mental health because I wasn't diagnosed with anything at this time. It was literally like, drug addicts like it was and that's like chill like i had fun with the drug addicts like they were chillers like we got to talking like we became friends but it was like full blown like drug addicts people detoxing and i just did not belong there and it was just like so crazy because they would make everything a competition like there was this one girl there let's call her stella let's call her stella i'm not going to use her real name but she was there for being an alcoholic there was people there for much worse but she was there for being an alcoholic and she was from like a bougie like place like very wealthy you could just tell like by what she had the way she acted and i had gotten alcohol poisoning and ended up in the hospital two times freshman year of high school so when they would ask me like what are you here for i would be like oh alcohol and marijuana because um that was like my issue i guess like i my issue was my mental health but like they were talking about substances so i was like i guess those are my two issues if i have to choose one so then stella tells everybody that i'm copying her and that i want to be her so bad and that i don't actually drink and like all this crazy stuff making all this stuff up and she was so nice to me to my face but then she would talk so much shit and it was like so terrible and i just felt so alone at this time in my life and i wasn't even diagnosed with bipolar disorder or anything like that so i just like was so confused and i was there for three months when i was 15 and it was just the most like it it was a really like terrible experience and like all the girls that were there it was like such a competition between who can who did the most drugs who had the craziest war stories and it was just like a terrible time in my life and we did like aa meetings like na and i was like this i do not belong like i am not a drug addict but yet they extended my stay there and had me be there for three months that was not the only rehab i have been to like i said i'm bipolar and they didn't discover i was bipolar until i was 17. so of course i wasn't on any medications and i didn't have any like you know way to deal with my bipolar disorder so of course manic episodes kept happening and then my second rehab was also the most depressing time in my life because they put me on a bipolar medication without diagnosing me it's a short-term bipolar medication it's called zyprexa and it's supposed to be when you're manic when you use it it they put me on it long term i would randomly faint i would i slept through my life and i gained 40 pounds in the span of like two months and they put me on it like long after i got out of that place 
and it was just like the most depressing thing ever for a while there in my teenage years i was just sleeping through my life because of the medications they were putting me on but then finally i went to a rehab it was like for mental health and that one was also really depressing and all of them have been depressing but th at the very least they did diagnose me with bipolar so i was able to kind of like figure out my med situation and now i'm like actually on a really good medication system but it's just it's like y'all like this took so long but like you know we chillin no i just think it's like kind of interesting to talk about because like rehab was like a pretty big big part of my life but i kind of feel like i like hide it in the back of my mind because i don't want to remember it because it was very a scary alone lonely time in my life then when i got back i went to this private school and i met some of my best friends and it was just like the best time of my life like senior year of high school was like such a fun time for me that's like a little bit i don't even know what that spiel was but like that's the spiel of my like little bipolarness so let's just keep getting into the facts i have struggled with a crippling nicotine addiction on and off for years and when i say crippling it is i hate being addicted to nicotine like if i could choose i would i would just like never touch it but it's kind of funny how i got addicted so back in the day when i was like 14 or 15 i stole my brother's jewel and in my head i was like he won't notice he'll just think my mom took it from him so i stole his jewel and then i just started getting addicted to jeweling and then that's what started my crippling nicotine addiction which is just like so bad and then it got to like puff bars and then whatever else like it was so it's just so bad i hate being addicted to nicotine i've been trying to get off i haven't been vaping for a few months but like it still affects me which is irritating i have been in only two relationships i'm 19 and i think that that's because when i like i don't really get into relationships very easily not at all because i'm not like picky at all and i don't really have like a type or anything like that but i do like to be like good friends with the person before i start dating them i don't know i just feel like it can be really hard to have guy friends sometimes being looking the way i look and i don't mean that in like a narcissistic way but just like looking the way i look i am i very much do fit the beauty standard a lot of the time all guys really want from me is something sexual so with when i get into relationships with people i like to make sure that we have a foundation first of friendship um so that i know that they don't only like me for my body or my appearance and i haven't and my relationships were both four years apart like i don't get into relationships that easily like i i just i'm not the one to i'm not like the type to get into a relationship super fast because i don't know relationships kind of scare me and i really have to be crazy about the person in order to let my allow myself to do that fashion has always been a big passion of mine but i'm not even gonna lie my older sister who's two years and two days older than me has basically taught me everything i know about fashion like i look up to my sister so much my sister is literally my ride or die my best friend and i really don't know what i would do without her she's just like she's just like she's honestly just like me and i'm just like her but she's like i would cons if there if i had a twin flame it would be my sister but back to the fashion i feel like when i was younger i very much clung to like the trendy outfits and like what everybody else was wearing but as i've gotten older i've started loving thrifting and i mean i've been loving thrifting since like eighth grade seventh grade sixth grade maybe um but like as i've gotten older i've really been able to develop my sense of style and i feel like it's very unique to me like i would say as i developed my sense of style i was definitely copying my sisters a lot and my style is very similar to hers but i definitely would say that my style has gotten more unique to me as i've gotten older for some reason my favorite article of clothing is a pair of like 
insanely large jeans. Like when they're falling off of my body and they're just like swallowing me whole, I love those. I love baggy jeans like more than I love myself. Like I, and I will die by that statement. Um, this is another fun fact. So a few years ago, my sister um, bought a Betty Boop bag. And if you guys don't know who Betty Boop is, this is Betty Boop. She's a 60s cartoon character. And it unleashed a complete, like, like it unleashed something in me and my mom. And this was like way back. She bought this bag and then we were like, okay, Betty is our new savior. Betty is queen, but we need Betty in our life. So now our whole house has like a ongoing theme of Betty Boop. And anytime we see anything that has Betty Boop on it, we immediately buy it. I have clothes, bags with Betty Boop, lighters, um, my sister has shot glasses, we have cups, plates, salt shakers, sugar things, things on the top of the shower, posters, we even have a Christmas de decoration that's Betty Boop, like, it's getting to a point where it's like, we have Betty Boop, it's a Betty Boop shrine, but we love Betty Boop, she's amazing. I've worked two jobs in my life and the first one was my favorite i worked there my entire senior year of high school and it was just like the best job ever because i worked with all of my friends and my bosses were amazing they were two sisters and they hired two sisters me and my sister it was like a small produce mark market small business and honestly i don't think i got paid enough but it was just really fun being there with everybody I love and working with all the all the people I wanted to work with and I love my bosses so much my current job is more corporate because it's Athleta um and that's Gap Inc Incorporated and I like it but I am I have definitely had to find a transition between working in a for a small business to working for a big corporation and it's like it's been a transition but i think i'm getting used to it for sure i drink coffee like a crazy person i when i when i still went to school i would bring 32 ounce water bottles full of coffee um and i would drink them all by like second or third period i would continue to have like energy drinks and then later on that day, more coffee once I got home and I would go out to get coffee. Like I have been a connoisseur of coffee for as long as I can remember. I remember in fifth grade, um, I wanted to be like my dad and my brother drinking coffee. So I started can, to like drink it, but I don't think I liked it back then, but I would just force myself to drink it until I did like it because I wanted to be cool. I wanted a latte just like my dad. I didn't want no hot chocolate. And so I started drinking coffee literally in fifth grade, which it didn't stop my growth. I'm 5'10", so that's a myth. So guys, I think those are all the facts I'm gonna share with you today. If you want me to elaborate on anything, I could definitely do a video let me know but the makeup is done so the facts are over now let me show you my work outfit okay guys this let me turn the light on this is my work outfit for today like i said i work at athleta so one of the dress codes is you can't have any like brands so it has to be relatively simple but it's still like a chill dress code just like leggings and a long sleeve these leggings are from Amazon, my dad got them for my sister for Christmas a few years ago. And this shirt is from TikTok shop. Shoes are Ugg slippers. <laughs> I wear these to work, don't judge me. But yeah, that's the whole fit. Makeup completed, something simple, work ready. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, like, comment. Ooh, that was like a weird gesture. Like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I hope you got to know me a little bit better. Hope I'm interesting enough for you. But yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Peace. I've been running, running, running. Gotta check me your back. I got hundreds on my neck and I got shoes on my ass.